What do you say we talk about some chatter? So what does this balloon have anything to do with chatter? Well, this is actually a really good example of what is happening when you get chatter. You have a spring, which in this case is the rubber band and the surface of the balloon. In machining, the spring is the system of the tooling, the tool holder, the machine, the workpiece, the work holding. All of that has some form of give to it. When your cutting forces are intermittent, and they have the correct frequency to excite the system, that's when you get chatter. Now in our last video we talked about helix angles and flute counts. Now a lot of people don't think, but that has a great deal to do with chatter. It's not just feeds and speeds, but it's the entire recipe of feed, speed, depth of cut, and step over or width of cut. Because all of those are going to dictate not only the forces applied, but also the frequency of those forces, if they're intermittent, and the amplitude of the intermittent forces, the RMS values. So if I take this balloon and pull on this rubber band, it's loaded, it's deflected. If you force a piece of tooling through your work and it deflects like this, it's not a big deal, right? because it's not chattering. Is it going to give you the most accurate cut in the world? No. But if you're roughing and you're trying to get the most performance out of your machine as possible, you don't care if the tool deflects a little bit. What you care about is when this starts to happen. Right? So now immediately when this starts to happen, everybody either goes for the feed knob or the speed knob. So what happens if I change the speed? Uh, it still chatters, it just does it at a different frequency. Okay. If I change the, the, the feed knob, I'm just changing the force. So if I make the force lighter, oh, we're still chattering at the same frequency. It's just, you know, we're hitting it a little bit lighter. So by changing your feed or speed, you may not be able to solve a chatter problem in all cases. So what is causing the chatter? Basically, what's causing the chatter is a force that is dynamic and changing at the same frequency that, the, that is a natural resonance or natural harmonic of the system. So when we talked about the helix angles and flute cutters and we looked at the 90 degree helix angle, a straight up and down flute, and we said it comes in the cut, out of the cut, in the cut, out of the cut, that is providing an intermittent force. It's under load, it's not under load. It's under load, it's not under load. Just like punching this balloon, it's an intermittent force. This is where our helix angles really start to shine. Because by using a helix angle, and by carefully selecting our depth of cut and our width of cut, we can control how much of that intermittent force is versus how much steady force we have. And this can be extremely evident in just changing your recipe a little bit. So let's go down to the office again, and we'll take a look at the end mills again, and we'll, we'll do a couple of demonstrations, and we'll draw out a force diagram over time of what that end mill is seeing as it goes through the cut, and as one flute exits the cut, and another flute enters the cut. Let's try to wrap our heads around how these helix angles can help prevent shatter, and also if we don't describe our depth of cut and step over correctly, they can also cause chatter. So in the last video, we talked about theoretically what would happen if you had a straight fluted end mill. So time for a little bit of art class. I'm not an artist. This is going to be awful. If we have a straight fluted end mill, so these are our flutes. And for this purpose of discussion, we are going to flatten everything out, which means we're going to take the end mill and we're going to unroll it into a flat plane. We're going to ignore the fact that the chip will get, will go from thick to thin or thin to thick, depending on how you're cutting, 
just to try to simplify the conversation. All of this stuff still applies when you start thinking about chip thinning and the chips going from thick to thin, but it gets a lot more complicated because it turns into a nonlinear system. By flattening it out and ignoring the nonlinearness, it's easier to understand and explain. So these are our cutting edges on our straight fluted end mill. This is going to be our piece of stock it is going to go into the cutter. So right there it hit one of the cutters. It went, the cutter took a piece off and now it's in between cutters and it's going to hit the next one and now it's in between and it's going to hit the next one. From the spindle load standpoint what does that look like? Well when the materials over here now this material this would be your depth of cut and this is your step over because remember your step over is going to be a cusp as the end mills walking through it all we're doing is flattening it out so it's whatever the distance is from the start of the cut to the end of the cut that's what this width represents so from a spindle load standpoint the load is zero right now as soon as that cutter hits that material bam you have full load on your spindle because the entire length of this cutter is now completely engaged into the work. So now that load is going to continue as the workpiece moves through the cutter. Now all of a sudden the cutter exits the work. Wham! The force disappears completely because now you're in between the flutes. This is a very bad place to be because now we're going to hit the next flute. Wham! We're at full spindle load again. And the process repeats. So you can see this generates this nice square wave pattern of load. Now if you've ever wondered why when you use uh, insert based face mills they tend to sound a little bit more ratty than an end mill. That is why. Because typically with your insert based end mills you're going to have almost no helix angle and the cutting heads are going to be spaced far apart and if you don't take a really wide cut you're going to get this interrupted cut that generates this square wave. Now if this square wave frequency comes anywhere near a harmonic of the system and the system being the machine, the tool holder, the tool, the work, the work holding, okay, the system, that is when it's going to take off on you and it's going to start screaming like a banshee. So let's look at what happens when we do the same thing with a helixed mill. So I drew out a helix mill here. You can see we, we basically just unrolled the mill into the paper and each one of the red lines is a cutter. Okay. So let's take our same piece of stock and let's move it through our cutter. So it's going to start here, our load's going to be zero. Now when we start entering the cut, because the cutting edge is angled, it eases into the workpiece and it doesn't become fully engaged until here. So from here to here you see a nice gentle increase in cutting forces. Then we're going to be a constant cutting force here as we're moving forward until this cutter engages, until this flute engages, so that we're going to have a little flat there. Now this uh, flute's going to start engaging, and it's going to engage all the way up to here. So now it's fully engaged. So, so now, and notice back here, this cutter is still fully engaged as well, so now we're going to increase our load a little more. Here's where it gets interesting. Our load is going to stay constant until we get here. 
Now, watch what happens. This is really cool. If you have your depth of cut and your width of cut, your step over, perfect, what's going to end up happening is as this cutter starts to disengage, the next flute starts to engage. So now as we slide this over, you'll see that this one is engaging just as much as this one is disengaging. The load wants to stay constant. Okay, So as we come to the next flute, again, this one starts engaging, this one starts disengaging. Our load stays constant. And this, this will keep on going for as long as we're cutting. Now when we start to exit the cut, which would be here, because now we're exiting the material, we don't have another flute, so now our load will start to come down as we come through. Okay, so that is what the helixes are providing you when you get the perfect recipe. Which load case would you rather have if you have chatter issues? Do you want this or do you want that? Of course, we want this. We want constant load because like we said in the shop, if we have constant load on something, it's going to deflect. But if we're roughing and we're trying to get out as much stock as we can, we really don't care if it deflects. We just care if it starts bouncing. So what happens if we try to take a really deep cut, but really skinny? Now we run into the same problem that we had before, where our load's going to increase, and now we're at constant load. Okay, now the cutter is fully engaged, or it's, it's coming towards the top. Now it's going to start exiting. Now it's exited. So now we're again, we're between cutters. So our load. Our load started at zero. Let me slide up a little bit here. Then we went to here and the load ramped up and now the load's constant. And the load's going to stay constant until we get to here. Now once we get there, now the load's going to ramp back down. Now we're here. So we got that little flat spot again where the load goes to zero. Not nearly as bad as the square wave, but we're still getting an intermittent load. And again, that intermittent load is what can cause the resonance and harmonic issues that will lead to chatter. So let's just do one more. Let's take a really, really short cut, but then a wide cut. Same thing's going to happen. Okay? See how that works? So if you like to take really deep cuts, but make them really thin, you're going to run into this issue. If you're on the other side of the fence and you like to take really shallow cuts, but make them really wide, you're going to run into this issue. It's only when you get the recipe just right that your load will stay constant and you'll have less issues with chatter. Now I know this is way oversimplified because in reality our chips are not constant. In reality we're going to have some thick section and then as we go through the cut it's going to thin out. So if we're climb milling the cutter is going to come in here it's going to take a really thick chip the load's going to be oops it's going to take a really thick chip the load's going to be higher and then it's going to thin out. If we're conventional milling, the cutter's going to come this way, it's going to start out on a thin chip, the load's going to increase, and then it's going to bottom out and the load's going to come down. Now when you combine this geometry with this geometry, that's when it starts getting a little bit hairy and it's harder to wrap your head around. Like we previously said, the rule of thumb is that you want one full flute and one half a flute 
engaged at all times. And that is what takes, the reason why that th rule of thumb is there is it takes an account for the chips thinning. Okay, this isn't ideal. You know, this is the black magic part of machining that I have found. And, and this is the thing that I struggled with most in learning is how do you come up with a recipe for the perfect depth of cut versus step over? You know, because a lot of the, the cut calculators, they're just calculating based on load and horsepower. They typically don't take into account the geometry. If we change our end mill geometry, now our step over and our depth of cut parameters for that sweet spot change all around. So again, that's why they make all these different end mills. And that's why with harder materials, you'll typically see a steeper uh, helix in them so that you can take cuts that look like this and with the steeper helix, you won't be in an intermittent cut. Because with harder materials, we can't take as much material off at once. With aluminum, when you can take a big hunk off, you'll have higher angles um, so that you can take uh, much more aggressive cuts. When facing a chatter issue, don't just limit yourself to feeds and speeds. It's very important to take a look at your depth of cut and width of cut and how many flutes are engaged in the cut at any one time. Now remember, the rule of thumb of what we want is typically we want one and a half flutes in the cut at all times. What we want to do is we want to reduce the intermittent forces or the oscillating forces and we want to increase or maintain steady forces because by reducing our intermittent or oscillating forces we can reduce those forces that are going to cause harmonics and resonance. If it's under a steady load, it typically won't resonate. So I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, please leave the comments below and thanks for watching.